everybody welcome back to another Jaguars in the barn video so today we're carrying on with the new Jaguar XF um, so we've already started some work on it um, I've started making a video for the front bumper that we're doing some repairs on um, that's ongoing I'll give you a little sneak peek that'll be subject to another video that's all you can see so far so it's not finished it needs properly painting in and what have you so that's the reason what I've managed to save. So what we're looking at now is the front brakes of the car. So I've already ordered new discs and pads for the front. The rears, let's walk around the back of the car, I'll show you. So the rears, as you can see, have already been done. So that's new discs and pads on the rear. Um, I had to take the wheel off today because there's a big screw in it. Uh, part of living where I live, unfortunately we get um, pick up a few punches, but where the screws come from I don't know. So that's gone to my local garage to hopefully, fingers crossed, be repaired because they was only replaced in October. So uh, hopefully they can sort that out. They've told me that they should, uh, that it, hopefully they should be okay. So today though, we're concentrating on my front brakes. So let me get down and I'll show you what we're looking at today. All right, so here we go. This is my front near side brake or left in the UK. So as you can see, let me just get you a bit closer. The disc brake, if you can see the difference in thickness, is unbelievable. Not been changed for a long time and the pads are down to literally nothing. So I've ordered new discs and pads. They're not here yet, but uh, I'm gonna make a start and get all the uh, caliper and disc off. You know, the uh, brake pad wear sensor was already out loose when I took the wheel off. I've ordered a new one, so we'll see what we do when we come to that. So first thing I'm gonna do is to remove the carrier. Uh, sorry, the um, caliper, this is the carrier. Gonna remove the actual caliper itself. And that's done by two seven mil bolts inside this plastic sleeve here with a little, or rubber sleeve with a plastic cap on the top. There's one there and there's one, I don't know if I can see it with uh, a camera on its stand. There's one, I'll just be able to point to it. I can get down there. Just there, hopefully you can see that. So they are a seven mil Allen key to take off. I say I already sprayed them up yesterday with some WD-40 and put the caps back on. So that's what we're gonna to start to do today. So I'll just whip the caps off. I'm expecting a fight when it comes to taking off the carrier because with the heat generated, there you go, that's the plastic cap. With the heat generated, through having no friction material there, just metal on metal, I'm expecting it to have kind of welded itself together. So yeah, socket on. I've misplaced my seven mil socket. So I've got a T45, which should do the same. Let me just, Wind them all the way off. They're quite long. Come on. Let's 
going to help it along. Just going to get a uh, flat blade screwdriver. I won't move you. You'll be able to see. So the bolt comes through here. And it's just there, look. So I just want to push it out so I can actually all right, get in there. There we go, so I can actually reach the thing. There we go. And pull that out. See the filth and dirt on it. So that needs a good clean up before we put it back. That's the top one. So we'll do the same on the bottom. I've already taken the cap off. Hopefully you can uh, See that? Oh, there we go. See it. There we go. There's yeah, the second one. Out. Yeah. Hopefully, you can see that. So yeah, it needs cleaning up. So we put that down. So that should be that part free. Now what we need to do is to remove this clip. So let me go and get a flat blade screwdriver for this part. Okay, so we can see the clip here. And there's actually a little hook on the end of this that we need to get out of the way. So it's a case of push, hopefully you can see that. So as I push it back, see the look at the little hook poking its head out. There we go. That's the same. Down the bottom. There we go. That's that off. And that's it in the right way around. So this little hook there goes into the hole there. So we'll pop that down and that should be us free to get it off. So I'm going to move you back because I'm envisaging, envisaging <laughs> this to be a bit of a struggle. Right, so what I'm going to do is just remove the cable just from the carrier there and at the back it just clips in and just move that out of the way the wear pad sensor was the same we can unclip that and move that out of the way and then you've got the brake line itself so now it's just a case of trying to wiggle the caliper off just a bit of forward and backward motion And there we go. I mean, look at the state of that. Look at it. <laughs> Someone's been driving this car 
like that. Unbelievable. And this uh, brake pad here just slides forward. We've got a bit of friction on there. But yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. Right, let me just rest the caliper up there for a moment. So we don't put any tension on the actual uh, brake line itself. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> I'm shocked. Look at it. Look at that. I mean, how does it get that, that bad? crazy so there's a, you can see a date or anything on it but anyway by the way i've got some new so let me go and get some string i'm going to strap this up and then we'll see about taking the uh disc off all right so i've just got a bungee i've just looped it through my caliper and then we're just going to find somewhere suitable to hang it so I'm just gonna hang it up off of my springs Hopefully you can see that so I've just sprung it up or hung it up sorry onto my coil spring so now to the disc itself I'm gonna have to remove the um, carrier to get it off. It's going to take my wheel nuts back off again. Just seeing what's actually holding the disc in place. Hot welded rust. <sighs> that may give me a challenge. Anyway, let's start with the uh, carrier. And so, what have we got there? What size? So, I got 15 mil. Bolts there, one there, and then one. I got the camera in just there. So I have already sprayed them up some WD 40, but I'm going to give them a, another squirt. So just a bit of a WD 40 again. Try and get between the um, the surfaces of the carrier and the main um, hub carrier, just because I think it's going to give me some grief. I could do with a uh, longer socket, really. So let me go and get a different longer socket. All right, so I've just gone to a slightly bigger ratchet. Give me a better chance. So I'll start with the bottom one. All right, wish me luck. go we're off I have got me uh, windy gun here but again last resort I want to go with what most people have in their workshops so we'll try it with the hand tools first there we go look the original sort of purple colour on the shaft of the bolt 
and the Loctite or thread lock. I do recommend you replace these. Um, this one's clearly never been replaced. So if they're in good order, I'm probably going to reuse it. We will see. So now for the what I think is going to be the challenging one. Just move. There a little bit. All right. And again, wish me luck, everyone. <sighs> Trouble is, you can't get a, an extension bar in here or a longer socket. Cool. I wonder if I can get my extension bar on. Let me get my extension bar. Alright, I've got my extension bar. I don't think I'm going to have the angle, we'll see. If I can get it outside the car. Might be a bit tight. Let's have a go. Just to get it started. Oh yes, yes, oh yes, all right, let's break it off. Yes, wow, that was easier than I thought. I expect some more of a fight. Out of the way. There we go. Another original bolt. It should lift away. I mean, look at that. It's like it's come out of a blacksmith's forge. Look at it. That's going to take some serious cleaning. Jeez. Right. See, I cannot see anything physically holding that disc on. So let me get me. Uh, Persuader. All right. I think it's just stuck, so gently. Yep. Oh, look at that. I've never seen a disc that bad. And I'm used to working on old air cool Volkswagens. That's unbelievable. Again, looking down there. That's literally like welded itself on. So a bit of cleaning to do. I makes that move so smoothly. So there we go, that's the disc off. So you won't need to see me do the other side because it's going to represent the same as what I've just done here. So a bit of a clean up, and then um, when the new discs and pads arrive, we're gonna get those on. So we're on the opposite side. And I've taken all the caliper and that off. I just want to show you the pads on this side were just as bad look. Not quite through to the metal, but certainly well past its best. So the disc has been a bit stubborn to come off, so I'm just lubricating it, WD-40 around there. And then we'll be able to tap that off, hopefully. Yeah, that's it, so that'll be all the brakes off. Uh, if this becomes any more difficult than it should be, I'll let you know. If not, hopefully the next video you'll see will be us putting the new brakes back on again. Well, 
just to say, disc is off. Pretty manky. Some of my hammer marks in it. That did not want to come off from there. Oh. Anyway, it's off. So, um, yeah, on to getting the brakes here. However, let me just move you in. Been there doing that. And another job to add to the list. Broken coil spring. So that might be one for the garage. Um, we'll see. Trouble is, it's quite a tightly sprung coil. And my spring clamps, I don't think, will fit on that type of spring. Um, but we'll see. Anyway, if it goes to the garage, I'll let you know. And we'll get that one done from there. Right, so next video will be, you see, me putting the new brakes back on again. Catch you on a bit. Right, hi everyone, welcome back. So it's a couple of days after we stripped the brakes down. Uh, we have to wait for the parts to arrive and there's a bit of a, an issue with delivery. Anyway, they're here now. So as you can see, I've cleaned up, I'll just take you in. So I've cleaned up all the hub running nice and smooth, no horrible wheel bearing noises, obviously now would be ideal time to do that. So I've cleaned it all up, you can see the debris down there, it was pretty bad. And it's all cleaned up alright, we've cleaned the surface here. I'm going to apply a bit of copper slip on that before we put the uh, discs on, rotors. So here we go, so I've got a pair of new Ica, Icha, Icha however you pronounce it, discs. Uh, pretty good quality. Like I say, they're not sport, drilled, grooved, or whatever, they are vented. Ugh. So they're just standard discs, straight swap replacement for what was on there before. I've got a new brake pad wear sensor, because the other one is just destroyed. A new pads which are from AB Tex Plus. Never heard of them, but premium quality. <laughs> but they come with the discs, so it was a set that I bought. So there we go. So um, everything's all cleaned and ready to go. So let's just pop you back down here. And hopefully I won't get in the way of uh, any work that we do. So it's basically a reversal of what we did the other day. So now it's all nice and clean. First thing I want to do is, um, in fact, what we'll start with, let me just make sure you can see. What we'll start with is um, just winding back the piston on the caliper. So for that, I've just got a, um, the old brake disc. I'm just gonna pop on top like that. I've got a G-clamp. So we're just gonna go on top of the pad on the bottom of the caliper and there we go. Hopefully that's going in nicely. So it's gonna wind that all the way back because they're brand new pads, brand new discs, so no wear at all. So we want this back the piston sitting back as far as it will go back in. So that's going in nicely. And the beauty about putting the old pad on um, is obviously you're not trying to catch it on the end of the piston. So you're not going to do any damage. It's not going to slip off. And this exerts a nice bit of even pressure across the top of the piston. And obviously the old brake pads for the skip Anyway, so let's just wind him all the way home until I get resistance, which is there. Let's back him off. There we go. That's the piston all the way home. 
All right, I'm just gonna, now I've got access to the whole caliper. Just gonna give that a bit of a, uh, oh, I'm brushing on the inside. I've done the outside already. Just be careful of the um, rubber seals and obviously the sensor wires. I just wanna get the excess off. And then if I can gently, just knock out any debris from inside the piston. Happy days. All right. This has come back a bit. What I'm going to do now is a little bit of copper grease. Um, just stuff I've got in the workshop. That's for donkey's years. And all you want on here is the thinnest of film. Now there's actually a lip at the top and a lip here. So there's no sense putting it in the middle. So it's literally, I'm just going to go around the centre. Where my disc makes contact just to stop it from sticking. Bear in mind, when we put the disc on, we want it to sit nice and flush. So this has got to be super thin, just a nice thin film around that lip. And I'm just going to do the same just along this outside edge. just to create that barrier between the disc. That's just worth taking your time. Happy days. That's why I got off my glove, because I've done that again on the disc. So once it's all assembled, put back together, we'll go over it with some brake cleaner. So next. Stop all that from flying away. So as you can see, it's a standard replacement from what we had on there before. Vented disc, the difference in the thickness. That's just going to slide on like so, and all I'm going to do to stop that from happening is just wind on a couple of the nuts. Just to hold it in place. Not necessary, but it just saves a bit of mucking around. Okay, next we're going to put the uh, carrier back on. So let me go and grab that. So here's the carrier. I'm just taking the opportunity to clean it up. I'll put a little bit of um, black paint on there just to tidy it up for now. So that goes back in the same way we took it off. So it slides in towards the back. And again with the, I've got the original bolts, which I've just cleaned up, taken off the old thread lock that was on there. So I've got some more thread lock here, or version of it, high strength retainer. So all we need, is just a little bit like that down the threads. And that will just stop this from wiggling free. So I'm going to do the bottom one first because it's the most awkward. There we 
we go. That's winding in nicely. Now I'll clean the thread off. Just pinch it up finger tight. We can do the same with the top one. Just to run down the thread. About that 15 mil socket. Get the caliper out of the way. Okay, we'll talk all these up at the end. What I'll do is I'll uh, put the torque measurements in the description below. Okay, carrier on. We sit down. So, Next one, I'm going to put the uh, caliper back on. And I've cleaned up all the pins, as you can see, and the thread. So I'm going to apply a light coating of copper grease all over these before we put them in. Take the lid off the copper grease. Right, let's get our new pads. So there we go. Nice thickness. Oh yeah. There we go. <laughs> On there. So obviously this is the one that goes inside the piston. To force. There we go, the spring in. There we go. Like so. And then we've got the uh, brake wear sensor, which you saw, and that goes into this groove. Hopefully you can see that just there. Now let's get this right. right hang on, let me just get my bearings with it a moment. Right, I'm back. <laughs> okay, so this is the pad that I just put on there. Uh, so this is the one with the metal tabs on the back. This is where the brake pad wear sensor should go, which is why I was a bit confused when I put it on there. Because there's no space for the brake pad wear sensor. That should have a groove in it that it slots into. So, I've just been down the workshop and I'm not showing you the process because you know I don't recommend everyone to do it. I've done it because I'm confident in my abilities in the workshop and what I'm doing. So I've just taken a little groove in the pad to be able to push the uh, wear pad sensor into position properly. So that should do the job. As I say, it's not for everyone. I just didn't want to be bothered to send it back because uh, that takes even more days. And I say it is only a. Uh, a sensor 
So I'm just going to make sure it's pushed all the way home. Obviously, if you've ordered them, the strange thing is I bought it as a kit. So the pads, the discs, and the wear pad sensor all came as a kit. So how the motor factors didn't realise that the sensor and the pads didn't match, I don't know. But there you go. We shall um, carry on. So that's all connected on with the lead. So we're going to put the lead through this hole in the caliper, feed it out through the back, like so. And then we need to put the um, clips into the piston. It's hard to show on camera, so. Right, so that's it clip time so the other pad just slots into these here so I can show you without broken your view so they just push forward just like so it's got an anti squirrel pad on the back so we're not going to bother putting any uh, copper slip on there we don't need to so that's the pads in place so let's take off the bungee Like so, support the weight. Get that out of the way. Right. And then just make sure we orientate it back in the same position we took it off. And slide it into place. Just making sure there's no pressure on any of the lines or anything like that. Happy days. Right. So what we're going to do now is these little uh, slide pins. Again, a bit of copper grease over the whole shaft. And again, just to stop it from seasoning again. And they're going through the back same as before as when we took them out. Just wipe my fingers off. We're just going to slowly find our hole. I'm not going to do it all the way up tight yet because I want to put the other one in. Give ourselves a bit of wiggle room. Again, a little bit of copper grease. Doesn't have to be a lot. Just a touch. Like so. To the hole. Wipe it into my trousers. <laughs> and let's find it. Sorry for blocking your view. And again, I'll talk it all up at the end and I'll put the specifications in the description. I don't have them to hand at the moment. Let's nip that up. Nip that up. And then it's the clips. Let's go on the front.
So if we start at the bottom, again, remember there's a little narrowed piece. So just push it into the hole at the bottom like so. We've just got to bend it round the top. Whilst there we go. And that's it. So we're going to put the rubber caps on the back. Again, I'll pop them off again when we talk of that, but just so I can show you it finished off. One on the top, one on the bottom. I want to just reconnect. I'll bring you in a bit closer. Hopefully you'll be able to see. So just need to reconnect. So I undid the um, sensor here. So that just clips back into place on these brackets here, look. Like so. Brake pad wear sensor. That's a bit opened up, that one. If it's loose like that, we'll also just put a cable tie around it to um, keep it in place. And before I can obviously put it all the way up, this is the old one. You see the end look destroyed. And that goes up to here. So just going to press the tab on the front, pull that connection off, get him out of the way, and then we're going to reconnect the new one in the same way. says right. push him home and then finally clip him back into the house in got a choice of two there that's a bit tight see that so we'll go for that one perfect I'm gonna put a cable tie around that one just he's a bit loose. And that should be that. So I'll talk it all up, as I said. Don't need to see that, it's a bit boring. And I've not got the measurements to hand. So, disc. New carriers, calipers, and pads, and brake wire sensor for a Jaguar XF year 2011. So I hope that's been of use and of interest to the guys that are watching this video. If you like it, please give me a thumbs up. And let's just spin that round so I can see you. Hopefully you can see me. So yeah, that's it, another video done. Um, so I'm gonna crack on do the other side. Obviously you don't need to see that. Um, if there's any issues, any snags I find, I'll let you know. Um, I'll just do a little short video just to show you um, and I also found, which I think I showed you, a cracked spring on the other side. So I've ordered another one of them, which has arrived. Um, so I'm going to see about swapping that over. And I'm going to do that uh, before I put the other brake disc on, just to give me as much room in there as possible. So we'll see how we go with that. If it turns into a bit of a nightmare job, I'll take it to the garage. Um, but yeah, so that's it. That's the brakes done for now. Thank you so much for watching my series. Hope you're enjoying what you're seeing. If you do, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, I like seeing all your comments, um, all the positive ones and your hints and tips. So thanks again everybody for watching the channel and we'll speak again soon. So from everyone here, which is just me, <laughs> at Jaggers in the Barn, I'll catch you again soon. Cheers now.